Welcome to the Apex Esports League V8 Supercar Championship. It is playing Project Cars 2 on PS4. Tonight is round four of the five round series. And we are heading over to Circuit of the Americas GP for round four. And tonight we have our usual two round session. So we're going to head off into session one in a moment. Practice will be 15 minutes, weather is medium cloud. Qualifying is 15 minutes, weather is medium cloud. The sprint race consists of nine laps, weather is clear with no mandatory pit. We'll have a short break, about nine minutes, then head off into session two. We'll qualify for 15 minutes, weather is light cloud. Then the main, rap, well, main race is 17 laps, weather is light cloud to heavy cloud with mandatory pit. And we had a leadership change in the championship, so Sami was leading at the end of the second round, and then Corby387 just snuck ahead by 10 points, now gaining the championship lead. It is very tight uh, for points for the top five, so it could be anyone's championship lead after tonight's round. So first race last week, we saw a zero qualify in pole position, take the victory and then also set the fastest lap and then in the main race he, we had Corby387 who qualified second and then actually took victory in the main race where the big points came across um, managing for him to actually steal away the championship lead. So we're now heading over into pit lane Joining us for the stream, don't be shy, make yourself known to the chat, say good day. And if you haven't done so yet, be sure to hit that follow button so you can get notified when we do go live for our races and so that we you can also support Apex oh sorry, Apex Esports League. Can't even get our name right. Darkseider is unable to join us tonight. He was able to jump in last week. Unfortunately, he can't make it tonight. We do have 13 cars on the grid at the moment. Zero is already out into the practice. drivers were all talking about just how challenging this track is and they are not wrong it is quite a grueling track it's very unforgiving the curbs and ripples around the track are very easy to get these cars spinning especially with the high torque from these high horse powered machines it is you have to be very cautious on the throttle when you're getting a very tight line around those curbs Too many of the drivers that have managed to be able to. Oh, we just had a disconnect. Demon effects has had to leave. He's probably having some tech issues going on. Hopefully, he can get back in. Rennie's joined us again for tonight's round. Having 13 on the grid for Kota will be quite nice. There's going to be a lot of interesting passes some very good technical opportunities to pass on this track and it's going to really be testing the driver's skill levels as you've got very fast corners very tight chicanes hairpins there is a lot of variance to this track and it is quite a lengthy track and trying to remember all those corners is um, a task in itself so hopefully some good luck for our drivers tonight and then Corby387 of course now becoming our series leader so we'll check out some statistics once I can find Corby so he's taken no pole positions his average qualifying position he has, has been seventh he's had two race wins and his average race position has been fifth so Averaging about 42 points per race. Now, 
highest average points earner is actually Demon Effects, who's averaging 47 points per race. He's definitely one to look out for. Unfortunately, hopefully he has dropped out, so if he can get back in. That's Demon is coming third on the championship with 234 points. Just been notified we'll get another joiner. Whacked Will will be jumping in. And thanks for joining us, JK Gamer. Good to see you again. And as you would have seen, there is sound controls to be able to play over the stream as JK Gamer's just done doing the knocking effect. You can actually play that over the stream that's being recorded. So have some fun with that. There's a whole bunch of fun controls that you can use for various incidents around the race. You can cheer and boo and all the like. And if you did join us for last week, we were at Long Beach Street Circuit with the main race on the lights. There was some fairly interesting incidents going on and turn one had a quite a big drama which we didn't actually get to determine what went on. There was actually a lot of lag in the replay where there was actually missing cars and the lag evident on multiple cars that, as the game does tend to take about a lap to completely synchronise with everyone's connections actually all getting lined up and especially when you've got 16 cars on the grid coming into turn one usually tends to be quite chaotic as the cars are usually in a very different place to what you're expecting. There could have possibly been a driver at fault in some of those incidents but it wasn't able to be determined. That was just deemed a racing incident. And I don't know where our cameraman is going off, he's quite, quite fighting a zero. First time's coming through on the board is 204.374 and that's set by Mick Cliff. Now Sami's just come through with a 202.6. And Sami did have a very good run in round two, managing to sneak ahead on the championship. And then he did have some bad luck last week. We did see him lose second position right at the end of the race. He pulled up thinking he had some more time behind before Demon Effects would catch up, thinking he could stop at the finish line and do a burnout. And as he was doing that, where he assumed there was 30 seconds gap between him and Demon, it was only about 6 seconds, so Demon just passed him right on the finish line. So, costing him some points. It was lucky it was only the sprint race, so it wasn't a big difference in points between position 2 to position 3. So he did manage to get on the podium. Bit of a spin out there, no damage taken, but he's bringing that car back in. Obviously, fine tune that car. To, as a normal, he didn't do too well last week. He did get a bit of damage taken, I think it was, in the sprint race. He did qualify six and then came seventh in the sprint, but he did have a very good race in the main race. So, the night event, we saw him qualify fourth and then finish on the podium in third position. Mick Cliff was doing rather well in the second race as well. He ended up finishing in fifth position after qualifying ninth. Some early incidents on in the race. Managed to be able to see him stay clear of some of the danger and move up several positions and ended up managing to stay up towards that top end. So he did quite well. D-Train last week finished 8th position. He was heavily affected by one of the events. I think it was in that turn 1 incident. As a lot of the backpack ended up actually getting piled up. He, however, he did have a big comeback. He qualified 15th in the main race last week and then ended up finishing in 8th position. And we did have a few... did not finish as some retirements and 
disconnect, I think, as well. So, Gallon 350, Weaven 777, and Dark Side are not being able to finish the race. And as well as Gallon 350 and having a disconnect in the sprint race as well. He's not joining us tonight. He's taking a well deserved break. He has been racing with us since the start of Apex Esports League almost 12 months ago. We had our first event, I think it was early April. And that was with the GT3 series. And he has won multiple championships over the course of the year. So a very seasoned driver with us. So we do wish him all the best on his break. Hopefully we'll see him back in time for the final race. We should probably see him for Bathurst. Keep an eye out for Gallon once he returns and carves it up around the mountain. Coco Dog last week in the sprint race after qualifying 8th position moved up into 5th so finished very strong. A brilliant drive by Coco Dog. And then also in the main race after qualifying 12th position, ended up finishing 7th, just behind Sami, who finished in 6th after qualifying 3rd. The Long Beach Street Circuit with all those walls and in the dark was a very trialling test for our drivers. Seeing a few different strengths and weaknesses amongst our drivers compared to what we see on other tracks, and that will be very evident tonight as well. And some tracks you can sort of dominate depending on the, just how technical the track is. If you're quite good at those really sharp technical corners, you can usually do quite well, especially on tracks like Long Beach Street Circuit. Then there's other drivers who are more capable driving about with the more faster corners, with more straights. Especially when they're very accustomed to that and have their cars set up to be able to handle those corners. And so trying to get a nice balance in setup as the session is allowing custom setups so all the drivers do have the full options to choose their tyre compound and completely customise the setup of these cars. And it is crucial to get that nice even balance for Circuit of the Americas. There's three and a half minutes remaining. Currently the fastest lap time is being set by Sami for 202.6. That's looking promising for Sami. Especially with Corby currently setting a time of 2.05. That's a good opportunity for Sami to try and steal back a good gap on points over Corby. And he does need to be very cautious of Demon Effects as he is only, I think, 9 points. Yes, 9 points away from Demon Effects. And then next in line is a 0143 of 219 points, and as a normal is 211. There we go. A very strong finish in the main race tonight. We'd have another leadership change, and then that will have been a leadership change after every round, which we haven't really had before. We've usually had someone dominate quite strongly, and we've just had Demon Effects come through with a very tight lap. Managing to take the second position with a 203-237. Still just over half a second slower off Sami's time. So Sami's going to be one to really look out for tonight. That's some very good pace that he's setting in the practice session. Truck temperatures are going to be reasonable. Game session time started at 9am. Weather is medium cloud. Location for Circuit of the Americas is rather warm. They will be enjoying some very nice grip, especially if they're running some softs. However, I wouldn't be surprised if drivers will opt for the hard tyres, especially in the main event. Unless they are intending on doing a tyre change in their mandatory pit. It's not a requirement to change anything on the car, fuel or swap tyres. 
you can just simply just pull up in the pit they'll jack the car up and then release you so if you can make the fuel last out and those tyres last out you can save yourself potentially 20 seconds or so in the pits and Mick Cliff still very competitive with a 2A 3.441 Cliff's been coming a very long way of late. He's been putting on some good pace, and I believe he drives with a controller as well. So that's now two drivers in this, this series that, or in Apex, that is actually using controllers. So the other one is Bertie, which we can't see. We can only see a few people in there. He's popping over some setups. Birdie is very competitive on a controller and we're starting to see Mick Cliff start to put that pace out as well. It's really good to see when we get some new drivers in the championship and then as you see them develop and start really laying some strong pace it's very exciting to see some leadership changes. Zero. Currently in 6th position, and several of the drivers in the lobby before heading over did mention they haven't done a whole lot of practice on this and it isn't a favourite for many. But I think it's a good opportunity at this rate for Sami to be able to steal back that championship lead with a good solid result tonight. Even just getting some qualifying points and then having a reasonable finish in the main event and it finishes above Corby at least in race two tonight. He'll definitely move back up ahead and lead that championship which will be very good heading into the final round next week and that is at Bathurst Mount Panorama and it is just the one race. It is a very long race. She goes for about an hour, I think it's 30 laps that we are doing. If we don't do our two sessions, it'll just be the one practice, one qualifying, and then into the main race. And it is double that of what we usually have for points up for grabs in race two. There is 120 points for taking victory at the mountain. They get on with how this series has been going so far, it is definitely going to be the decider. And anything can happen at Bathurst in the blink of an eye, it can be all over. Kakadus in some different colours for his car today. Here we are missing DG0787. Sometimes he does join in a little bit later. He's actually got the same colours as DG. Hopefully he can jump in and we'll be getting whacked Will. There we have three practice complete. Sami managed to keep that fastest time a 202440. I think we could possibly see a slow 201 in the qualifying but at some very tight pace going through the list. Uh, Simo Simzel 13th position with a 2.10, so it's only 7.5 seconds separating 13 cars. That is quite impressive, especially for Circuit of the Americas. Now heading into 15 minutes of qualifying. Drivers now need to get a point. A position on the board. There are points up for grabs, 20 points go towards your championship for setting pole position. Sami will be looking to try and get a strong pole. Corby usually has a bit of a strategy for his qualifying sessions. He usually takes it reasonably easy for most of the session and then comes through with some very quick laps towards the end. A bit of a lag. 
Bag has been coming in and Whacked Wheel has joined us. So Whacked Wheel now taking the grid size up to 14 cars. It is going to be good if we can manage to get a full grid. Not expecting anyone else I think to join as Darksider can't make it and we don't have Gallon. It should probably be full at 14 cars. jump on board with our current championship leader for a lap around for a hot lap he's already out on the track we might jump on board with demon fx as he's closest coming up to do a lap the white wheels now out on the field looks like he is in matching team colors for weaven's car 47. Yeah. We shall jump on now because he has just come on to pit straight. And a very sharp hairpin for turn one. Followed by a nice sweeping right hand turn. Can take it rather quick. You want to stay out wide, don't hit that inside curb, otherwise, you will flip that car around. You can go quite flat out here if you can be easy on the throttle. A little bit offline coming through that you can cut in right down the middle and lift that car side to side. Another sharp hard left onto another hard right, and then up over a crest to the left. Very off camber. Fast corner down onto another very sharp hairpin. More like an arrow tip, these it is sharp as. Trying to get a nice apex there and being cautious not to get over that curb, as you otherwise it will put that car into a big spin, which will cost dearly. I see a few incidents there and a lot of passes. Another sharp left turn, almost hairpin. Careful on that throttle as you've got to get that car right out to the left hand side. Heavy onto the brakes for another sharp right, very tight hairpin, almost double hairpin, leaning off into the last few turns. Left elbow into a double apex right turn. And into the third. Last two turns you can get these quite quick if you get the car up over the curb and down into the last turn, ready for pit straight. Quite a nice lap by Demon FX. So it sets a 203, so it's pretty good for the first time out. And he's carrying a decent amount of fuel. So you'll notice, oh, he's just had a spin. He did clip that kerb as he's taking that hairpin. Uh, that was where I was mentioning if you do get up over that and you get on that throttle, it does get quite disastrous. There's a normal, he's just moved off to bring the car in. Zero, it comes through for 204, he's taken some damage already. This track as it's usually left right left right for a lot of the turns when you do have to try and get that perfect apex for those hairpins trying to then quickly get the car across the other side of the track ready for the next sharp corner that is where if you're on the throttle and you're having to sharply turn it especially when you're using every bit of track and getting that outside wheel onto the exit curb that's when these things will just enter a spin Um, he's coming through for very similar times, so a 202.652, I think it was a 202.4 that we saw him set in the practice session. 
track temperatures will have slightly increased. Game time session, sorry, game session time, should I say, started to 10 a.m. and the weather is still medium cloud. Not having the sun start to heat up the track too much yet. And the sun multiplier is times two. In 15 minutes, we'll see half an hour out on track will start to warm up towards the end of the session so we should probably see some quicker times being set especially after some rubber is being laid down on the racing line and he's bringing that car back in as a normal is coming through for the second quickest time very tight to Sami's time a 0 0.088 difference between the two Just noticed there's a normal's name is actually Lemon Hayes backwards. So it's a very clever wordplay by as a normal. I have to mention that I just noticed that to him. Oh, and Rooney's just coming through with a 202.4. Very good pace by Rooney. Really flying through these chicanes. Is where I was mentioning you can absolutely fly through if you get that golden line straight between the middle and, and it feels great oh big slide is going to be almost wall contact he can quickly get that car back around it'll be interesting just to see how much fuel he's running so 20.5 liters usually see lighter fuel loads being used usually about 15 20 liters of fuel for qualifying so they can get that advantage of that lighter car. However, for this track, going too light is going to be disadvantaged as the car's not going to stick down too much and tend to be a little bit flighty around some of these really flicked corners we are going left to right. Where we jumped on board with Demon FX, he was running quite a heavier fuel load compared to what you would normally see in other races. So that's car kind of starting to get lighter for him. Mix Cliffs has gone off track. I don't know if he's taken that damage just in that instance or not, or if that was done before. So once you've had a scrape and brought it back into the pits, it still looks the same. It doesn't refresh the car. A lot of 203s on the board. Our first three are in the 202s. Rooney, Sami, and Ezanomal. And then in the 203s is Demon FX, McCliff, Azuro, and Coco Dog. Then we head down into 30, setting at 204.287. Then a little bit behind is Kakadu 2 with a 205. Triple sevens come through with a 206.5. And at least this round actually has a bit safer pit exit. Puna Park and the Long Beach Street Circuit being the last two rounds it was a very dangerous spot for coming out of those pits. We saw some incidents happen in the qualifying session where someone coming out got quite a hard shunt. So it's quite, a, as you can see, I'm not sure how well it looks on the stream. The red line on the map that's up on the screen. So just where, uh, so that's not where Simo is coming. Actually, two turns back from Pit Straight is actually the entry point to the Pit Lane. So you are doglegging and then around to the left and then going for the length of Pit Straight. So there's going to be some a fair bit of time lost for pit stops, which is what we saw at Long Beach Street Circuit as well. It is a very long pit lane. It is the main straight of the track, and then it goes for that whole length. We saw about 50 second pit stops. So that's a lot of time to be spent in the pits. 
and it will be crucial as to what they do for their pitch strategy tonight in race two. As if they can avoid doing too much to the car. They can be in and out a lot quicker, potentially saving themselves another 20 seconds in pit lane. No movement so far in the qualifying times. Rennie's sitting tight with the 202.4. He's brought that car back in. That was the time we saw Sami set in the practice. Given current track conditions. Keeps that same pace as before. He should be able to finish that semi as will disconnect. Hopefully he can get back in in the next minute. Otherwise he's going to miss the race start. That will be unfortunate for Simo. Don't forget, make yourself known in the chat. You can see all your chat messages. Let me know who you think is going to have pole position. Will Rooney manage to maintain pole position? Or will Sami, who is trying to climb back up to the top of the championship leaderboard, It's only behind Corby, Crank 7, by 10 points. And so far, Corby's only qualified with a 204 triple eight in ninth position. That could be potentially enough points to gain that lead back over him just in the qualifying. And then if he can follow that up with a stronger finish over Corby, and then he will end up having a very good chance at securing a much larger advantage in points for the championship lead. Here we are, we're seeing Corby do what I was talking about before. He usually takes it a little bit easier in the remainder, sorry, the start of the qualifying session. And then he digs deep for a couple of solid laps, but he's only going to get one lap. three off pace. He's really focusing ready. He's just going to have this one lap to try and do it. We usually see him steal pole position many times throughout the series. Very other series. We saw it last week. He managed to get up, I think, into second on the last lap. So keep an eye out on that standings board for qualifying. It's probably going to see Corby jump up. But however, following that strategy, if he makes an error, gets caught up behind some traffic on this last lap, then he's ruined the chance for a strong time. Kakadu is sitting over 205. So we have seven seconds separating the field. Tempo Sims hasn't been able to get back in. He disconnected a couple of times in the lobby beforehand. So he's obviously having some tech issues going on. Very sorry. No, he's probably going to have enough time to get another lap in. There is an opportunity to steal pole away. No, he's brought that in. That is it for Sami. Going to have to hope no one else sneaks in above him. Effects about halfway through a lap. There should be enough time to wrap up these laps. Qualifying is now complete. There's a minute 50 remaining to complete this final lap. If anyone's just crossed the line. I think this is Corby crossing the finish at the moment. Still got time. We should see these guys get through enough. He's already gone past the sector, so we're not going to see how he is going, wherever he's up. 30 once the cameraman realizes where he is. That's a zero tucked in behind. I oh know, is that 30 flying Kakadu? No, Kakadu's in the pits. I think that's a zero just up ahead. 
It's up to a zero. Demon affects Bertie and Corby to change this qualifying leaderboard. Oh, locked up by Bertie. That's cost him. That lap is done for him. Zero is up 0.152. That's enough to steal a third position start. Oh, that's going to cost him some time. That's a bit of a slide. Corby didn't improve much. Oh, Zero did, wasn't impressed. He brought that in. Unfortunate last lap. So Rooney manages to keep that same time early, set early on in the session. So not too much improvement going on for the times as the qualifying session went on. So Rooney starts in position number one. Sami starts in position number two. As a normal in third, followed by Demon FX Zero, Mick Cliff, Corby, Coco Dog, Bertie, Kakadu, I said D-Train, Barbado, Weaven, and Whacked Will. And we did lose Simo Simzel to a disconnect, so he's not going to be able to get back in for race one. We should probably see him hopefully back in for race two. Ready to get race one underway for round four. And he's quite heavily staggered the grid places, as you can see. Pole position has quite a good gap between there and second place. However, a very good start by Sami here. We'll have him in a nicer line coming into turn one. They're going to have to be very cautious of the cluster. Oh, where anyway, we've had yes, Simo just rejoin back in, so he's going to be able to spectate the race, but he's not going to be able to join in for the race, missing out on those race points. Fortunate for Simo. Hopefully, his connection issues are okay for session two tonight. So, drivers have got all their setups switched over for the race and hit that ready button. We'll get the lights counting down, ready to start race one for round four. Don't forget, let us know who you think is going to win race one tonight. Don't forget to hit that follow button and also don't pay attention to our social media links down below as well so you can follow and support your favorite drivers and here we go lights counting down and it is green and away we go and it's a bit of a slippery start by Rooney 9015 Sami doesn't get away too quickly but as a normal also got away a little bit slower so that's been an advantage for Rooney, so he gets away and in a nice position. Oh, there's a bit of a spin. I don't know what was going on. I think Azuro was up on the inside line, and he may have touched as a normal. That's going to be good for Rooney and Sami to get away now. However, Sami has the championship leader, Corby, 387, now up into third position. So he did qualify, I think it was in seventh we saw. So he's now moved up into third and hot on the tail of Sami. It's not what Sami needed for this race. He needs to get ahead of Corby to maintain, or sorry, take that championship lead back. There we had a bit of a change where Zero started up towards the front. He's now down to eighth position. We've got Ezra Nommel, who was, I think, in third, is now down into 12th position. So I'm not sure how much damage there is. Doesn't look like too much. I think it may have just been a spin out. It'll be something to check on the incidents list when we review the replay in the coming days. Be sure if you don't follow us on our Facebook page, you don't need an account to with Facebook to actually see it. You can just jump on and see it publicly see the incident report when we post the results and standings for the round. 
so far. Rooney is holding a nice line out front as our race leader. He's pushing this gap out to half a second. It's in two turns. He pushed that out by 0.2 of a second. And the Corby has actually really started to fall back. He's now one second behind Sami. So he's sitting hot right on his bumper for most of that lap until that last, last sector. It's so a sector three. Corby quite off the pace. And oh, an inside pass for Sami. This is going to be quite a risky move. But he's now two abreast and just gets in front. Now owns the track position, forcing Rooney to get on the brakes as Sami owned the apex coming into the turn. We've seen Sami get some brilliant lines through here and also Rooney going through the chicanes. Sami has really flown ahead, so almost pushing the lead out to 0.8 of a second. That is some brilliant driving by Sami. If he can get ahead now, this is going to be a big advantage to him. And then he'll just be able to push through as Sami tends to get into a lot of bad luck with other drivers on the field, causing some incidents. Sami missing out on some big opportunities for race wins before by being caught up in other cars' problems. If he can't manage to stay out the front for another seven laps, it will be a tremendous victory for Sami. And we did see Corby start to slip behind a little bit. He's starting to catch back up on Rooney. Rooney's trying to close that gap. He's varying between half a second to 0.8 of a second difference between him and Sami. So there's some very big differences in sections of the track as I was mentioning earlier on the track is completely made up of every possible type of track out there it is technical it is sharp it is fast it's it's made up of all different parts it really test drivers abilities especially when you are more heavily focused on technical focused on the faster tracks. So far we're seeing Sami absolutely blitz this. Timing so far, fastest lap is a 204.493. That was just the lap set by Sami. Next quickest is Corby with a 204.953. Here we go, we've seen Rooney, this is where, he, sorry, Sami pushes that lead out from Rooney, but then Rooney catches it up over these next couple of corners. So just watch that time go down. He had it out to a point eight, it's down to point six, down to point five, and down to point four. Rooney having a much better strength through that section of the track. And was turn. Sorry, the second sharp hairpin. I thought that was turn one for a moment then. You can see the time being pushed out by Ro sorry, Sami over Rooney again. These guys starting to slip away a little bit. We'll take a see what's going on down the back end. So we've got Ezra Nommel who got caught up in the incident quite early on. He has started to move up. A bit of a lock of the brakes by Weaven. That's just cost him oh no, not quite a position. Almost an incident with as a normal. That lock up would have been bad for the two of them. And they are starting to close in on birdie 10.35. He's not too far behind a zero as well. Zero. Starting to look at trying to catch up to Kakadu but he's got four seconds on Kakadu. Kakadu is starting to close in on Coco Dog is then a couple of seconds away from Demon FX and Mick Cliff is doing well up in fourth position. We saw him last week end up finishing on a fifth position I think it was from memory. So after finishing eighth from the sprint race he did finish in fifth so we're seeing him in fourth position now. He's got three seconds to try and catch up on Corby 387. But if he can 
closing on Corby. He could have a crack at being on the podium. That would be a fantastic result for McCliff. Sami has now pushed this lead out to one and a half seconds over Rooney and he's halfway through race one. So he's on lap four of nine. A little bit off pace there. We saw not take that corner so good last lap around as well. But he's still managing to hold Rooney at bay. And then Corby has also slipped behind Rooney as well. So there's about a second between each of these guys. And then down towards the back we have Ezra Normal still trying to catch up on Weaven. Coco Dog is closing in on Demon Effects as well. He's managed to pull away from Kakadu too. Kakadu is starting to slip behind a little. He's got a second to catch up on Demon Effects. So um, he's still leading. He was down to about 1.2, but he's now pushed that back out to 1.8. Last lap set was a 205.115, Rooney set a 205.577 and Corby a 205.880. So you can see at that pace just why these three are starting to separate between themselves. And Mick Cliff comes through for 205.506, 0 0.3 of a second quicker that lap over Corby at that rate could easily catch up that second difference between him and Corby and have a chance of trying to make a move for position three. So it's going to be very interesting to see if he can do that. Down towards back end, as we're seeing in eight, is closing in on demon effects. Bertie was right up there. These three are all having a crack at position nine. Weaven and Ezanomal looking to pass Bertie. All very wide for Ezanomal. That's just cost him some ground, but a very nice line by Weaven. He's seeing him now tuck in right behind Bertie for that straight. He's going to get some nice speed going down that line. Can he follow it through and beat him to the apex for the corner? No, he doesn't decide to make the move. He's a very sharp corner here. And easy on the throttle coming out. Oh, a braking markers out on the track. And Rooney's starting to close back in on some. He's now brought it down to under a second again. There is a fair bit of a gap between him and Corby now, so that's nearly pushed out by four and a half seconds between second and third place. These two are going to have a little bit of a safety net from Corby, which is okay for championship-wise for a strategy for Sami. He does just need to finish stronger over Corby. He did have a much stronger qualifying position, so he's already caught that gap of 10 points. He just needs to further this just by finishing ahead of Corby. If he can do that by taking position at the top of the podium, it would be spectacular and a well-deserved win for Sami. Sami's taken three pole positions. He's had no race wins, no second places, and three third places. And he would have had that second second place last week in race one, but lost it to stopping and doing that burnout. Very unfortunate. Hopefully he can wrap up these last three laps and take victory here for race one. 
I don't think you'll be stopping to do a burnout just um, for tonight. But Kakadu 2 is now caught up on Coco Dog. He's going for an inside line pass, but he had to shave off a lot of speed. Otherwise, it would have been dive bombing into that corner. Oh no, and that, I think that is Demon Effects that just ran off the track on the throttle a little bit too early, so it's just cost him a position. Birdie gets around him, so now that leaves Dean, sorry, Weaven and as a normal to start climbing up onto the tail of Demon FX. Unfortunate error by Demon, costing him a position. But position change is going on. D train at the back of the field. I think he did get caught up in that incident at the start. Wackville currently on lap 6, sitting in position 12. And to our race leaders, oh that is a very fast line by Rooney. Feels almost contact, he contemplated going for that move but it was going to end badly if he did take that move. I don't think he would have been in the wrong. Both drivers would have had claim to the apex at that time. However, any incident would not have worn a penalty to either of them. It just would have cost them their race positions. So, not worth the risk. That was a nice quick decision by Rooney to yield and allow Sami to sneak back ahead. sitting on the championship board with 82 points, position 14. He hasn't been for all the races. He's only been with us a couple of times. He has missed out on points. But he is a very quick driver, especially so in these cars. So he is going to be feeling a bit of pressure now with having Rooney caught up that ground again. Last lap was a smidgen quicker over Sami's time. Sami setting a 205-204. Rooney a 205-177. You can see Rooney looking for an opportunity here. And then, ooh, a tiny mistake by Sami. That's probably cost him 0.1 of a second. So now down pitch straight, coming on to turn one. Can he hold Rooney off? I think Rooney's maybe considering. No, he's decided to not quite. And these hairpins aren't as easy to try and manage a switchback. So this is where you decide to take. Oh, Rooney's just gone off track. Luckily, that was on a safe bit of the track where there was plenty of runoff track to allow that before he ended up in a spin and putting it into the wall. That has cost him 1.3 seconds. He is hot on the tail of Sami. That's now allowing Sami a bit of breathing room. He's only got to manage to hold him off for a two more laps and this race will be his. Driver's probably feeling a little bit of fatigue after Eight laps around Circuit of the Americas. It is tiring on the arms with all the sharp corners and the constant left rights throughout the track. It is quite a long track as well. These guys are doing a fantastic job so far. Back in the last lap, can Sami hold him off? Be sure to put up some good cheers for Dami and Rooney when they come to cross the line. This has been a excellent drive by these two. Oh, and we've had a change down towards the back. So Corby has now slipped back into fourth position. He's struggling for the car at the moment. So there's been some errors that's allowed Mick Cliff to actually now get ahead of Corby by four seconds. 
So this is going to be a good opportunity for Mick Cliff to finish on the podium. This is going to be a great race for Mick Cliff. We've seen a phenomenal drive by Mick Cliff over the last couple of rounds. He does this from a controller as well. So he is really tuning in to the handling of the game on the control, especially for the V8 supercar, and even more so done around Koto, and that is a phenomenal effort. I would have given up probably by half of a lap trying to do that on controller, so kudos to Nick Cliff and also Bertie who do it on the controller. It's and we found out that he did do that probably about halfway through our first year finding out Bertie was on the controller that was a fair bit of disbelief by many drivers and he could be keeping pace and beating many of us on the track from the controller but I think Sami is pretty clear now he's on the last lap he's on the back straight he's got one second gap over Rooney unless there's a significant error that sees him lock it up miss a corner or get out on the curbs or too early in that throttle and puts it into a spin. So you can see he's playing a rather conservative. His pace is 1.4 off. Oh, that is a very bad line by Rooney. So that's just cost him 0.2 of a second on that corner. Sigh of relief for Sami, seeing him probably go wide off in that rear mirror two very different lines coming around that corner for the two. I did actually see Bruni have a very quick exit on that corner. Here we are on pit straight unless something drastically goes wrong here for Sami. He has won taking the top of the podium with flash of the lights. Well done Sami. Don't pull up for a burnout. You don't have the time. Congratulations. A brilliant win Sami. And lovely drive by Rooney as well he did not make that win an easy one and a super congratulations to Mick Cliff who's come astoundingly far in the last two rounds taking a spot on the podium in third position congratulations Mick and some bad luck for Corby taking fourth position so error costing him to fall back into that spot so zero off in fifth position so that's a pretty good recovery after the turn one incident the birdie in six demon effects got affected by that as well and fell to seventh position so it'll be an interesting one to review and see what actually went on wouldn't be surprised if there's a fair bit of lag a lot of issues tend to be caused by that um, instance with the lag so but we have sami on top of the podium in position one and then followed by Bruni in second and Mick Cliff in third. And then the rest of the field is Corby as zero. Bertie, Demon Effects, Waven, Ezanomal, Wacktwill, Kakadu, D Train, Coco Dog, and of course we didn't get to race. He did get disconnected in the last few minutes of qualifying and missed out on that. We'll have a brief look and see who got the fastest lap. So it looks like a 2.04 is the time. So 2.04.485, and I think that's Rooney's time. And then there's only just a smidgen under Sami who end up getting a 2.04.493. So brilliant driving by all cars out there. Some best laps is only a difference of a couple of seconds. So very exciting. We're going to be taking about a nine minute break. Then we'll be heading off into session two where we'll have the 15 minute qualifying and then the main race, which is 17 laps around Kota. So stay tuned and don't forget to hit that follow button as well. We'll see you soon.
and welcome back for session two. So we're heading off into qualifying for race two of round four of the five round series. And of course we are in the USA for circuit of the Americas GP. The track length is 5.51 kilometers with 20 turns. We saw a lot of ground being made up in sector one. It's seeming to be several drivers really doing well in sector one. That is a very tricky spot. Having a few disconnection issues for Kakadu in the lobby beforehand. Thought some of Sims will end up being disconnected, not being able to get through. For the race, he joined just as the race started, so we all watched it from pit lane. As you can see the broadcast, hopefully he manages to have be free of some tech issues. He said he does a big disconnect throughout the whole house. Hopefully that connection lasts for him for the session and the race. Thank you for joining us for the stream and you are new to Apex Esports League and have not yet hit that follow button, be sure to hit follow so you can be notified when we do go live. We broadcast our Thursday night races. So at 7.30pm Australian Eastern Daylight Time weekly every Thursday night. And next week is the final event, round five of the series. And that is course at Bathurst Mount Panorama and with how the championship board has been going after each round it's going to be the decider that is where all the big points are up for grabs and if you're interested in following our drivers and seeing the results and standings not just seeing briefly the results on our broadcast you can actually follow our Facebook page so you see down below um, fb.com slash apex esports league you don't need a facebook account to actually check that out it is publicly available so you can jump on to there at any stage without an account and see what our results and standings are we also have the android app which has all the results standings and calendar events you can be ready for our events and if you're keen on getting involved in any of our racing you can also then follow across to our groups, uh, sorry, our group from our page. So that is where all the drivers are organised with session details and how to get involved in our races. If you're not on console, you're not on the PS4, and you are on PC and have I racing me, so do I racing leagues. Currently we are running the Indy Car Cup, doing mobile racing in the Dalarat D12. That is a lot of fun. I do drive in that. So be sure to check that out. You can get all those details by following our Facebook page as well. It's got links to it so you can head off from there. You are on iRacing, just search for Apex Esports League. And also down below is our Facebook link. Oh, sorry, the YouTube link. Oh, and Mick Cliff is just, uh, as a normal, I think he's just reconnected. I did think we were missing something. We did have 14 last time around. Just not sure what's going on for him. Yes, but our YouTube link, all our races get upload to YouTube after we've broadcast live on Twitch so that way all our past broadcasts are saved there you can go back through and check out all our past races so you haven't missed out on any of the action for the series and be able to go back and watch any of our previously run series as well Corby Coming through first time with 213. It is a cold lap. 
getting a little bit loose with that car. Game session time is 1pm. And weather conditions are light cloud. You can see a bit more sunshine coming down onto the track compared to the first session where we had medium cloud for practice and qualifying. The sprint race was clear conditions. Track temps should be quite warm at the moment. It will be a little bit different coming into the race as well. Oh no, I think Simon may have... Yeah, we can hear him running. Yeah, it's a disconnect going on for Simo, that's unfortunate. Yep, there he goes. Oh, big broad slide by Rooney. <laughs> this is a brilliant recovery in the end. He almost managed to drift that straight back onto a nice line. Yeah, there goes Simo. Notification is disconnected, that's unfortunate. If he can get his connection issues sorted in the next five minutes, he might have enough time to get in and get a time on the board, but that will at least see him manage to see the start of the race. And Zero did mention that he thinks he may be at fault for an incident in turn one from race one. On the brakes a little bit, seeing D-Train coming up behind him quite quickly, and then as Anomal was already turning in on the corner, and he was trying to avoid the inside line, otherwise it could have been an undercut. I'm not sure what may have happened. They were talking about they think they may have been a touch but Zero didn't notice a touch from um, D-Train. So it'll be interesting to check out, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's a bit of lag. Oh, that was a big spin and hit by Bertie. Quickly bring that car back in the pits to get back out for another shot. Two A is coming in on the board. But Zero with the quickest time so far. Saw the 202s. 202.4 was the quickest time in qualifying. And that was by Rooney. We've been doing well with a 204.363. Got a little bit delayed by avoiding catastrophe from the turn one incident. Hopefully he can get a bit more pace. Oh, a bit of a slip and into that wall. He's going to have to bring that car in. It's not going to be worth bringing it around. Yes, he's reset that car back in. So another opportunity to get out. Still ample time to get a time on the board. Don't forget when joining for the stream. Say hello, use those sound controls down below. Play those sound effects. Cheers and boos and oofs. Lots of funny phrases from movies and things like that. Oh yes, and we've just had... Yes, Simo, yes, Simo's back in. Whacked Will hasn't got out on track. I'm not sure if he's having some connection issues as well. I'll have a look at it. Contemplating with some setups. Nice, mate. We'll have some better luck now. Simo needing to get some extra points on the board, so he ended up being in the brunt of quite a hefty penalty in race one last week. We're going for an inside pass in turn one making some contact after excess speed into the corner and dive bombing and pushing the car into the wall with no redress so 
losing 60 points, unfortunately for Simo. He does need to recover some ground from that. There's a few points lost for not redressing really and that fault incident. As on most occasions, you'll probably be cleared of not actually receiving any penalty points if it doesn't really affect the other car. Otherwise, if it's only slightly affected them and you've redressed the position, you only get the much lesser infringement penalty points. We did see the same move at Rapuna Park done by Azuro, which cost him a redress, no redress penalty as well. Good. We don't see too many penalties on the board. It does make our drivers into some very courteous and very gentlemanlike sportsmanship going on in the events, which is what we like to see. We have Kakadu too, with the quickest time out there. Not sure if drivers are playing around with some hard tyres. They were mentioning that. The slicks they were running for the sprint race was actually quite badly worn by the end of it. And if you are familiar with playing the game, once you start seeing the tyres in their little indicating box get down to the red, you know their tyres are very bald and even a little bit before then it actually starts to get very dangerously slippery. 17 laps and then them finding the splits being scrubbed out. They could probably get away with it with late afternoon track temperatures and with the cloud cover starting the race is light cloud and it will progress through to heavy cloud cover. So the track temperatures will be reasonably cool. So they could potentially blast out with Slicks and then do a change halfway through. It'll be interesting to see if drivers do that. I did talk about it last week with this Long Beach Street Circuit, which is quite grueling on the tyres. We did see pit stops being done halfway through the race, especially so for a zero who tends to usually be able to last the set of tyres out and tends to pit in the last couple of laps. However, that strategy was not the case for him last week. He'd have to pit in earlier. So it could be the case this time around, unless he's decided to go on hard tyres, he could possibly have them last out. They, I should say, they should last out, so you won't need to do a tyre change, saving possibly 15 to 20 seconds in the pits. It's good to see some 202s on the board. There is only two minutes remaining for qualifying session. A bit of change up towards the top. Sami is currently in fourth. Kakadu's come flying through with a 203. So he's up in position three at the moment. Sami, after a great win for race one tonight, currently qualifying in fourth position. He is ahead of Corby. Corby did slip back, so he's definitely got the lead to the championship at the moment. He climbed ahead at a nice amount. Strong qualifying result here in this session. Then followed through with a very nice finish in the main race tonight. Set him in a good position coming into the final. As is the only the one race and it's the big points. And if he can do that and manage to be able to finish probably around the fifth mark and at least still ahead of Corby, he has a very good opportunity to win the championship. And the drivers are competing for a prize as well. So we usually have prizes for our series. It's usually an Apex Esports League champion coffee mug. 
And um, this time we've managed to print off some Apex Esports League stubby coolers. The stubby cooler will be going to the winner of this championship. And stay tuned as well. We're going to look at trying to run some competitions for our lovely viewers of our streams. We will have an opportunity for you guys to call yourselves a stubby cooler as well. Probably look at having these put out some tips as to who you think will win in each of the races and then if you are correct you're going to draw to yourself a prize. So stay tuned for things like that. This wheel just crosses the line. Improve. I'm not sure it just cut away too soon. There we have qualifying for race two for round four. We have Rooney 9915 starting in pole position again. A bit of a change for the top starts as we have 0143 starting in second, Kakadu 2 starting in third, followed by Sami, Corby, Mickcliffe, as a normal, Demon FX, Bertie, Coco Dog, Weaven, D Train, Whack Wheel, and Simo Simsel. So Simo being 16 seconds between the field, otherwise there's 5.7 seconds separating them all, but Simo did miss out on that first race, so he was going to be a little bit off pace at the moment. So hopefully he manages to continue his connection, doesn't drop out in the race as well. I'm sure over the course of 17 laps here he'll have some good pace. So in race one, Rooney get off to a little bit of a slippery start. Which cost him a little bit of ground, but he did manage to recover reasonably well. And Sami held a nice line. And Zero is pretty good at getting off the mark pretty quick. So he's usually looking to find a few positions from race starts. Meaning Rennie could be in for a little bit of trouble from a good start. We have Hakadu starting from position three. Could be balked if Rooney gets away to a little bit of a slippery start again. And then he has Corby right behind him. Got off to a good start in race one. And was balked by Rooney's slippery start. It'll be interesting just to see how they go for the start. Get a little bit of a closer shot. Now we're going to zoom back out again anyway. Try and get a very nice view for turn one so we can try and catch all the action. Try and start from the back. Ooh, a little bit of edging forward by Kakadu. He's a little bit of a slippery start for Kakadu. We can see Bertie ducking up between the middle of the entire field here. It's a nice start by Rooney. He's gotten away pretty quick. Azura is tucked in a very outside line so that's very tight. Sami is tucked in right behind Azura. It's a very clean turn one. That is a brilliant drive by all. All played very cautious, and they are now all oh, contact by Sami, and that is Mick Cliff that spun Sami around. That's going to cost him here big time. He's taken a fair bit of damage. He's now dropped to the back of the field. Not sure what was going on. I think the two interlocked around the corner. A bit of rubbing, and then that just drove them straight off the track. So Mick Cliff and Sami now towards the back. That is not what Sami needs to try and push this championship lead out. 
because this is the big points. This is where Corby managed to get ahead on the championship. He had a very strong result in race two. The Kakadu is 1.8 seconds behind Rooney. Rooney's blistering ahead again. This is what we saw in race one. Then they did start to catch in on him pretty quickly after the first couple of laps. Packages trying to close that gap, but we've got Azuro and Corby sitting very tight on each other's tail and then really starting to push that line in. Oh, Corby's just gone a little bit wide. That exit was a little bit slippery for him. Very tight a line by Corby coming through that bend. Had a bit better exit speed over Azuro, but Azuro's getting away on the following turns. And it's pretty tight for all cars still so far. Considering Sami and the Cliff's issue, they're only 11 seconds behind the race leader. So they have recovered okay. Hopefully not too much damage and they will be able to recover a few positions just yet. These Rex Lee's uh, still trying to close in on Rooney. Rooney's getting away pretty quick. Zero's starting to slip behind Kakadu. You see a little bit different pace as Zero's really losing it through sector two. Kakadu's got a lot more pace on him. Oh, Corby making a bit of a touch to Azuro's car, so that ended up putting him offline following into the next corner. Not sure what was going on with Corby then. I think he was going for a very wide line to try and take that next corner. And Bertie right up the tail of Corby. Oh, there's almost a touch on that rear left corner on Corby's car. Bertie had a lot quicker pace on the exit of the corner. But he's now slipped behind. Demon Effects is now starting to close in on Bertie. Nice line of traffic going down the straight. Oh, Demon Effects a little bit slippery. Didn't get any spin. He backed off the throttle just enough to feather it back around. Starting to Assess Bertie at this stage. He's got some quicker pace than Bertie. It's just needing to be able to find a good opportunity where he's going to have an advantage over him through the corner and then try and get around him nice and safe. Down towards the rest of the field as Anomal is having D Train start to close the gap on him. Weaven is also closing in on D Train. Sami having some bad luck. That car is very bruised and battered. Hopefully it's not performing too badly. I don't think he's going to be having any suspension issues, but he's definitely going to be losing out on a bit of downforce and possibly a, a bit of top-end speed as well. So that's very unfortunate for Sami, but he's still making way. I think Simo moves over to allow him through. Sami get up ahead enough in time to get around. Yeah, that should be fine. Back to the front. Zero is slipping back away from Kakadu. Kakadu is flying ahead now, but it's not enough that he's going to be able to catch Rooney. So half a second difference on that last lap. Rooney is getting ahead very quickly. What we saw in the first few laps last race. However, he had Sami there to close that gap and then put the pressure on him and then managed to get around. And over to our championship leader, Corby, when yeah, finally catches up to him. There is, oh, Demon Effects has just made an error. I'm not sure if there was a little bit of a touch with him and Coco Dog. I think there may have been. Oh, there's a bit of chaos going on. It's just another contact. I think Coco Dog gave the position back to Demon Effects, but then he spun around again. Some 
Huge bad luck for Demon FX. Was the case in race one tonight as well. Demon FX will be a tad furious at the moment. I think a couple of bad runs, but not so much as what it would be for Sami with him and Mick Cliff in that incident in lap one. Mick's car looking very heavily damaged. So there's some broken windscreen and some steering issues going on for him as well from the looks of it. And he's just closing in on whacked wheel. The car managing to be drivable at this stage. They're probably going to try and last out another five laps if they can. Save time, not having to pick, because otherwise if they do pit and they're running those softs and they're not going to have those tyres last out, and that will mean a second pit stop, and then that will cost them big time. Nazuro still struggling to try and catch up that ground on Kakadu. Kakadu is still keeping him at bay. Last lap, quickest lap, was Kakadu 2 with a 204 986. Rooney then setting a 205.077. We have Kakadog starting to close in on as a normal. Oh, he's going to make a move, an inside move coming up to the hairpin. I think, no, he's tucked back in. No, sorry, that's the 90 degree turn, so that's fine. But he's really got some pace over his anomal here at the moment. He's probably going to see Coco Dog make a move on as a normal on this lap. Losing a little bit of ground while trying to well oh, that's gonna cost him dearly that has yeah that's dropped him back by a second means he's going to have a bit of pressure from Weaven coming up onto him unless he can try and recover some ground from that mistake. Very nice line, brilliant line by Weaven. That was a beautiful corner. Some big speed coming out from Weaven. Coming on the final turn. I think Weaven is really zoning in. He's got some Pretty good pace at the moment, 206095 for that last lap. Coco Dog, 206639. 0.6 of the difference between the two. Let's see what's going on down the rest of Mick Cliff is looking at trying to get around Whacked Will, and he is driving that heavily damaged car as well. Unfortunate for him after a podium finish in race one. And Sami after the incident at that start, seeing him now in 12th position. He's got 10 seconds to try and catch up to Mick Cliff. We then slipped behind on Coco Dog. He's lost that ground that he was starting to close in on. Now, race leader Rooney9115 is now pushing the lead out to only two and a half seconds. Last lap of 205.376. That is the quickest time out there for the last lap. Let's see just what fastest time has been set so far. So the quickest race time out there is a 204.377. That's also set by Rooney. He's in a nice zone out there on his own. He's pushing that time out over Kakadu. He's not catching ground over Rooney, however. Still managing to keep enough pace to stay away from the Zero. Here we are, Corby already pitting in. Not sure if he's taking some damage or if he's deciding to swap out tyres. 
he goes. Reasonably quick pit. Zero is still struggling. Hi Gal, thanks for joining us mate. Had a good, exciting race in race one. Gallant Sami end up taking a victory. We had Nick Cliff on the podium in third position as well. Mr. Sami did manage to be able to secure enough points to regain the lead back off Corby. Coming out of race one, however, now incident between him and Mick Cliff in lap one saw both of them get heavily damaged. And now Corby has opportunity to get ahead, so he's now dropped down into 11th position. However, he did just pit, so he's pit early. Just probably going to just last out. So there was discussion between the tyres that the softs didn't White last out to nine laps in the sprint race. However, it's much cooler track conditions at the moment, so the softs will probably last out reasonably well in the hards. Probably aren't going to see enough track temperature that is going to give them a lot of grip in this circumstance. Race, sorry, weather conditions are light cloud through to heavy cloud. And uh, from the looks of things, it's looking like it's probably quite heavy cloud cover at the moment. We're not seeing as much sunshine on the track as we did at the start. And when it, weather conditions are synced to race, it is actually not just halfway through when there are two weather patterns, it is random. It'll be a good gal to see you back for Bathurst. It doesn't matter if you're not up to practice with it. It's always good fun racing around the mountain in these things. We got Zero still struggling to try and catch up that ground on Kakadu. They're still sitting on par with each other and still struggling to try and close in that gap on Rooney. However, Rooney's last lap is now 206.184. So his pace is starting to slip off a little bit. It can happen after a while, especially seven laps in now. And he's had the track to himself out the front. You don't have anyone to gauge yourself off. And once you start getting that little bit further out, you're not really seeing someone in your mirrors. You tend to get a little bit complacent and you can start to lose a bit of pace. big difference between being too far ahead and not being able to keep that pace to then being heavily pressured by having someone being a nuisance in that mirror of yours and then you having to then start looking at defending your line and taking different lines through corners to defend your position yet still stay clear of incident. As Anomals managed to cop a time infringement penalty, so he's wearing one second. So he's done a cut track somewhere over the course of 17 laps around Kota. I don't think it's really going to affect him. But Zero's managed to get ahead. So Kakadu's just had a spin. So he's had a spin in turn two, costing him a position to a Zero. Zero has got a fair bit of ground to try and catch up on Rooney. I don't think he's going to be able to do it. His lap pace is also starting to slow off a little bit. Wouldn't be surprised if it is also tyre related as well. And yes, Weaven has moved up into fifth position. He's been trying to catch up to Coco Dog for the last three laps. Coco Dog was holding him back for a little while, so it looks like Coco Dog may have made mistakes. He's also lost position to D Train. D Train was sitting a little bit behind Weaven. 
So it does look like driver error for Coco Dog doesn't look like he's taken damage. There are several spots on Kota where it is quite safe for a runoff. We did see that happen to Corby in race one, where quite a significant error came about in the chicanes. Where we managed to recover that and not go off into a wall. And Sami, after the big incident in turn one from starting towards the front of the grid, did see himself down in 14th position, so he's now recovered back up into 10th, so he's doing well for him to try and reclaim some positions, sorry, some points to stay ahead of Corby. He just needs to finish stronger than Corby, and then he'll have that opportunity. So yes, Suzuro is pitting in, so the pace was most likely off by tyres. So they were saying the tyres were reasonably scrubbed. Yes, I, that's true, Gallon. I think Corby's in a good position for pitting in early. So Kakadu's also pit in. Coco Dogs now in the pits as well. As is into the pits. This will be a quick change of tyres and off they go. Rooney is yet to pit in. Weaven now in position two, if he can try and hold out. It could be different too, he may have decided to go out on tracks with hards. But if he can manage to cover some fairly good ground at the moment, push this car to its limits, he could be in a strong position to come out of the pits and be ahead of a few of the other guys and maybe cover another position or two. Just depends on whether he does need to do that tyre change. It's going to add about 15 20 seconds to his pit stop, and it is a very long pit lane. And Bertie currently in seventh position. We've had Zero come back out on track in sixth position. Kakadu coming back out in fifth. Oh, and he's, Corby's all. Loud move by Kakadu. Not sure if Corby's struggling with the car at the moment. Just depends on whether Corby may have taken a little bit of damage that caused him to decide to pit in early as well. And if that was the case, he probably decided to do a tyre change a little bit earlier. And then he may be finding that to be a struggle towards the end. A little bit of contact between him and Kakadu going into the corner. Reasonably tight, a little bit of lag going on from looks between Corby's car and Kakadu's. Yes, Corby's car is jittering around the track. Kakadu's going to have to be cautious here. There could be a contact made without realising. Oh, that is tight. Didn't look like contact was made. Kakadu gets ahead. Oh, there's still some lag going on. There's going to be a bump here, and it's going to be lag result. Kakadu's car was nudged out towards the side of the track. That's what Kakadu is seeing here at the moment. Corby's car position isn't accurate. We saw some incidents at Rapuna Park with Corby's car doing similar things with it. So Weaven now heading into the pit, same as D-Train. Army's all seen for the pits. I'm not sure how much he's going to be paying attention for damages to the car. If the car's done all reasonably okay with nine laps so far, he may just weather that out and just swap out for some fresh rubber. There's only seven laps remaining. Rooney is still flying ahead. I don't think we've seen him pit in. Kakadu now at least four seconds behind. Oh, that looks like I think Rooney's. Well, no, Rooney's made a mistake. I think he's made wall contact as well. No, I think he's. It's enough of a gap for runoff on the exit of that corner. So it's just cost him a heap of time. 
Kakadu will become our race leader as soon as Rooney peels off into those pits and he's already looking at making a move. This is going to be risky. That was very dangerous for Kakadu. He was having to get on the brakes a lot sooner and start turning that car out a lot sharper. That's already a very sharp corner and they're taking that very strong inside line. Cost him a lot of time. But he's definitely... I know Rooney has pit, sorry. His last pit, sorry, his last lap was a 2.40, so he has been in. But him and Kakadu now are actually battling for the race lead. A lot of corrections going on with Kakadu through the corner. Very reminiscent of sorry, drivers are using a controller for corrections of the steering, or usually a little bit of lag. Oh, a brake lockup. That's caused a balk for Rooney, who's then made some nose contact to the side of his car. That could have been a lot worse than it was. That was only a reasonable soft touch in the scheme of things. That could have been a very race-ending situation for the two. And I think Corby is doing very well after having hit him quite early. Uh, recovered a fair few positions by doing so, so a very well played strategy in these races, especially these point enduring tracks with a variety of technical and fast corners that Kota has. Pitch strategy is a very key point in ensuring victory. Corby's having a little bit of a hard time here trying to keep a zero at bay as well. That's right, Kelly. I think we're really staging for a, a top finish. Well, Corby's car's still lagging around. Zero is going to have to be cautious here. Probably going to see things a little bit different. And Zero does tend to go for. Quite an aggressive attack on the corners as well. So with doing that, he's going to have to be very cautious as if he sees an opportunity to make a quick dart for that apex. He actually may not actually have the opportunity. Yes, so a straight line pass is going to be beneficial. Oh, and there's a slight contact. Both cars own the apex at that point. So that's very lucky, a nice rub by the two, and Zero manages to get that position. Oh, but almost a swap around by Corby, but having to lock up those brakes, and so now that's going to see as a normal start to catch up on Corby and look at an opportunity for a pass. Kakadu and Rooney still fighting out front. Kakadu starting the slip behind. Rooney's very quick through sector two. Those chicanes, Rooney gets a golden line every time. When he was chasing down Sami after Sami got around him halfway through the first race tonight, that is where Rooney was catching up heaps of ground over Sami. Ooh, a little bit of spin by Kakadu. That wasn't who we um, were seeing, but there's a battle going on by Weaven and Coco Dog. A nice inside line by Weaven that was well done. So he came in there with a lot of speed coming into that very sharp left bend. So that could have potentially been a locked up brake and ran wide, but he managed to get that car straight through and held ground. So brilliant pass by Weaven. The D train now also starting to catch up on Coco Dog. But Coco Dog's not giving up, but he ended up making an error, goes off wide, he brings the car back on, he's going to have to be careful going back onto the track over that ripple strip under power, that car will spin, it is dangerous. Bad errors by Coco Dog is costing that opportunity. We have 
down towards the back, we have Whacked Will starting to close in on Simo Simzel, who's managing to have some okay connection issues at the moment. Oh no, he's just made a mistake. He's taken out a few cones, flying them down the track. He disconnected towards the end of the qualifying session in session one and missed race one tonight. He did disconnect in qualifying session two. He's here for the race. So we got to see all 14 cars start the, the race in a zero. Big speed going through. Can he follow it up through the chicanes? Can he hone in on Kakadu? See him hunting down Kakadu at the moment. He's two seconds quicker over Kakadu on that last lap. So that was lap 12. Ooh, a lock up on that back left by Kakadu, but then a zero, a little bit slippery on exit speed. So let's have Kakadu start to pull away again for the straight. Be interesting to see. I think there's going to be enough speed to catch up for a zero to try and make a move. We can see Kakadu locking up that back left coming into the corners. The tyre is going to be taking a fair bit of thrashing around this track that could potentially open up an opportunity for a zero to try and go for an left turn attack at this point when you are there you need to gauge your opponent look for their weaknesses and then plan a move there's only four laps remaining zero is going to try and steal that position away he's going to have to do so quite quickly Kakadu is four seconds behind our race leader. Azura has slipped behind just a little bit again. There's some big differences between sector two and three from Kakadu and Azura. Rooney is flying ahead. Unless something drastically goes wrong for Rooney here, I don't think he's going to lose out on taking the top of the podium for race two in round four. He's done some brilliant driving tonight. Oh, and that's a zero. A zero is spun out. Oh, and he just gets out of the way in time for Ezanomal to get around. Sorry, now that was Corby. Just getting around. So Ezanomal and Corby have gone past. Corby moving up the line. Got six seconds to catch up on Ezanomal. As a normal time, second penalty is potentially going to be quite safe. SM Weaven has gotten around Demon FX. We've seen a few errors by Demon FX, and he's had a lot of bad luck with some incidents tonight as well. I think quite unfortunate for Demon. Even also didn't have too much luck in race one. But he's on fire for race two. Carving through the guys rather quickly. And he's only two seconds behind a zero. So a zero might be in for a bit of trouble with the current pace that we're seeing from Weaven. Last lap set was 0.4 of a second difference. Over the course of three laps, that could easily close that gap in. And Corby's in for a bit of strife here with a zero. Oh, and he's still lagging. This is some deja vu. We saw this before. Zero goes for inside the line for turn one. That's pretty wild. Not bad. Sorry, not turn one. Last turn. Turn 11. And he gets around. Down pit straight. Hold nicely, he does. Going to start wheeling away from them quite quickly now. Corby falls behind into position five. And then the 
that's going to open opportunity up to Weaven777 who's still carving up so he's two seconds quicker last lap over Corby he's going to be going for a move on him very quick in the yeah, that's right Gal Weaven is focusing on the iRacing thing he wasn't probably going to make it tonight I was considering not finishing up the series focus on the iRacing he did um, enjoy the Bathurst 12 hour so for those of our other viewers who aren't aware Weaven and myself participated in the Bathurst 12 hour on iRacing racing the Audi R8 GT3 and then Sabring 12 hour is actually coming up at the end of the month and we're already talking about um, participating in that. Here we go, he makes a pass on Corby. So we even now can't moves up into position five. Yeah, need a need a sponsor, you need to get a machine to be able to join us, gal. Jump in on the team with us. The driver would have been quite handy, it was in a very very tiring stint, especially after supposedly starting at 9am and then issues making us hold out to 11pm that night. It was a very long day. So at lap 16 now, D-Train Barbado is making a move on Demon Effects. Demon Effects blocks that inside line, forcing D-Train to yield and lose a bit of time. Kaka Dog is in ninth position, so he was running up towards the front. He had a good finish in race one as well. Yeah, a couple of errors have cost him some positions tonight in race two. And that Simo Simsel has just been lapped by Rooney, so he's gotten around pretty safe, and he's leading the race by 5.2 seconds. The Kakadu is following it up not being able to cover much ground. He's got a bit quicker pace than what Rooney is, but Rooney's probably going to be playing it rather conservative, and he may have been held up just a little bit, getting around Simo Simsel. That's nothing to worry about. He can easily afford to lose a couple of seconds each lap, with only being on lap 16 or 17 now. Now the Kakadu could be in trouble to losing position two when our cameraman decides to look up. We'll see as a normal's car. He is still wearing a, well now, two-second time penalty. Kakadu is reasonably safe then. If he does decide to allow an opportunity for Ezanomal to get around, he's only got to sit on the, that tail as he crosses the line on the final lap, and he will be still reclaiming back that position by way of time penalty. And Azuro may be in trouble coming on to the last lap. That's Whack Will off to the side there, just moving off track, flashing the lights, letting the guys through. Great sportsmanship there. <laughs> Chip in for you. If we could, we probably would, mate. Be nice if we could start getting some some good sponsorships by some PC guys. We might be able to get some good deals and stuff. If we start carving up out there, we might be able to get a few sparks of interest that would be nice. Oh, that's unfortunate for Weaven, so he's made a mistake. Got on that throttle and it's a little bit slippery. At this stage, there's probably a bit of tyre issues going on. He's probably quite low on grip. We did have a very quick pit stop, so I think he may be lasting out on a set of hards. And as a normal's got around Kakadu, Kakadu's let him through. Difference between them is only a second. Yeah, that definitely didn't happen. It would have been nice to have gotten some of um, Freebie Bicky sent our way. Can't remember who it was in the our drivers who worked with Arnott's that said they're going to put in a word. So it would have been nice, gal. 
Kakadu struggling with the car. That back left tyre is smoking coming into the corners. I think he's really cooked that back left tyre. That's going to be causing him some braking issues. You're going to have to be very cautious. And then that time is really slipping away. So Ezra Nommel's time penalty is probably going to be safe. If he can really make up for this lap. Here comes Rooney coming around on the final turn, ready to win race two for round four. The top of the podium for Kota. And here we are, crosses the line. Congratulations to Rooney, brilliant drive. And will Ezra Nommel lose that position too? Three, yes, he loses position, so drops down to third position. Kakadu then claiming second place. There's a normal now in third place by way of time penalty. That's Simo moving over for a zero as he crosses the line in fourth position. And then a nice broad slide by Weaven to finish the race. That was brilliant, destroying that car. Oh, there's more chaos going on at the finish. So Corby taking him out as he crosses, followed by Demon Effects in seventh. D-Train in 8th, Coca Dog is coming up in 9th, oh, I missed someone, Bertie in 10th, Mick Cliff after a good qualifying result and then getting caught in that incident, finishing in 11th, followed by Sami who was also in that incident, it'll be, I don't think it's a penalty situation, the two just rubbed and locked and then ran off track. Timo Simzel coming up in 13th position. 30 seconds remain to finish up last laps. <coughs> Whacked Will in 14th position. Here we go. Last cars coming across the line now. And there we have it. The conclusion of round four for Circuit of the Americas GP. We have Rooney 9915 at the top of the podium taking victory. And... I think he may have set the fastest lap of the race as well. So 204.218. So blistering quick time. So a clean run for pole victory and fastest lap in race two tonight. Also on the podium, we have Kakadu 2 in second position, followed by Ezra Nommel after having the time second penalty to steal away second position. Then we have a 0 Weaven, Corby, Demon FX, D Train, Coco Dog, Bertie, Mick Cliff, Sami, Simo Simzel, and Whacked Will. So it is a great race tonight. And of course, we have the final round next week. So we have for round five, it is Bathurst Mount Panorama. And it isn't the same race setup that we have for those who aren't familiar with our series. It's just the final race. So we'll have a 15 minute practice followed by a 15 minute qualifier and then a grueling 30 laps around the mountain where anything can happen in the blink of an eye. It's going to be exciting and plenty of action. So if you haven't done so yet, be sure to hit that follow button. Check out our social media links and we hope to see you trackside for next week at 7.30pm Australian Eastern Daylight Time on Thursday for the final round and the decider for the Apex Esports League V8 Supercar Championship. Thanks for tuning in.